Today, I'm pleased to introduce to this session, hands-on demo, building and scaling AI apps with Zilf Cloud. And our friend, Frank, uh, Frank. Um, if you join our events before, you're definitely not uh, strange to Frank. Um, so welcome, Frank. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself and get this start. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Steffi, for, for that quick intro there. Um, for everybody here that is online right now, thank you for making the time to come uh, and, and take a look at you know some of the stuff that we've been building. Uh, my name is Frank. I'm currently head of ML here at Zillis. I've been doing ML for probably close to a decade at this point, starting with the good old computer vision days. Um, uh, and in my capacity here at Zillis, a lot of what I do is I get to work with uh, users such as yourself or potential customers such as yourself uh, and helping you get up and running and um, making sure that you're really, really successful, not just on Novus, but also on Zill's Cloud. Uh, so today, this session is going to be more, it's going to be more hands-on. Um, feel free to follow along uh, if you'd like. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running over some of the different features and some of the different things that you can do with Zilla's Cloud. Uh, I'll run through you know, a couple of different things that you might want to know or some of the different things that you might need, need to know. Um, and then what we're going to do after that is we're going to get into one, maybe two notebooks. Uh, the first notebook is actually going to be a, a hands-on notebook about building building a movie recommendation chatbot. Uh, it's going to be using Zillow's cloud and it will be leveraging retrieval augmentation. Uh, the second one is going to be about, uh, potentially the second one is going to be about multimodal rag. Uh, so for that one, we're going to take a video and we're going to run, uh, we're going to use that video. We're going to ask and uh, hopefully get our large language model to answer some questions over that video. So that's going to be a pretty interesting one as well. So uh, I'm going to get my screen share going here and we'll just get right into it. So I want to start by with giving you giving everybody here, you know, a quick intro into Zillas Cloud. Some of you might already be familiar with it. So if we go to cloud.zillas.com, we'll actually get a chance to, to, to really just see the interface here. I've already logged in, but if you haven't logged in yet, what you'll see is a login screen where you can uh, where you can create a new account. And the first thing that you notice right off the bat is that we have multiple organizations here. So in this case, I am part of the Zillow's organization, but I also have my own. And my, you know, in my own organization, what I can do is I can view, click into it, view all the different projects that are in there. Uh, by default, every time you create uh, a new org, there is what is called a default project. All projects have project IDs, and you can also see, you know, a variety of just high level information about that project too. Before we dive deep into here, I also want to run through some of the things that we see here on the left. Uh, so we can look at billing. Uh, we can look at the API keys that we have for our project. So for in this case, I can look at my key. Uh, and I can also look at any members keys as well. Uh, now, when when you come and you you, you want to, you, know, you want to, let's say, limit access to certain databases for certain users uh, or certain projects for certain users for certain keys, this is the place to do it. So for example, I can come in here, I can create a new API key, I can call it uh, test two. I can I can make them an owner or I can make them a member and give them access to, let's say, very specific projects. And what that will enable me to do is, and for example, here, I can also restrict access to specific clusters as well. And what that'll enable me to do is really just make sure that the users within my organization, as I build out whatever solution that I'm trying to build on a vector database, uh, a top vector search, that they are capable of um, really having access only to the items that they need. So I can create this test too, and you can see it's created just like that. It's very, very easy. Uh, you can look at the number of projects that it has access to. I'm actually, you know, for in this case, I'm not actually going to be using this particular API key. I will be using my own for the demos later on. You can also take a look at the members that are a part of your organization. Uh, and it is very, very easy to invite new members as well. They get similar, you know, you can also give them uh, access to specific projects. And you can make you can give them you can make them a member or you can make them an owner as well. I'm not actually going to add anybody in this case, but that is an option uh, for you if you want to do that. Moving forward, we also have alerts. Now these alerts are mainly what I like to call administrative alerts. 
And if you, you know, uh, we can actually just take a look at some of these here. So we can, for example, you know, if your usage amount per, per day or, you know, your Zillow's cloud usage, if that goes above $100, uh, what you can do is you can say, hey, I'm going to send an alert out and there's going to be emails uh, that get received by the organization owner. I can also come in and edit these. So for example, if I change it to a thousand right on the spot, and perhaps I want to use pager duty or I want uh, I want to use Slack as well. Those are also some of the interesting ways that we can uh, that, that we've integrated you know some of these other third party platforms directly with Silas Cloud so that you can make it very easy to get that data to get those alerts uh, that you need. So I'll just update this one uh, again. It's not uh, de depending on your organization's policy what you want to do and what you need to do. Uh, these are these are going to be pretty interesting and some really important things for you too. You can take a, take a look at the alert history here. In this case, I don't have any because um, I haven't actually set these up for uh, my particular organization just yet. Uh, but moving forward from there, we can also look at activity, you know, what happened here. And then we can also take a look at some settings as well. Here, I can set a system maintenance window during this particular window is when you know you'll see upgrades to your cluster or or, or or things that need to be changed and these are these are all rolling upgrades and and again during this maintenance window you will see maybe some slight jitter uh, you will see maybe 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 just a little bit of uh, a higher latency for some queries but your vector databases will still be up and running at all times, um, so you don't have to worry even for production workloads. Last but not least is our recycle bin, and this one you can see, you know, a lot of the previous, uh, well, I'd like to say, vector databases have been spun up and then deleted or put into the recycle bin later on. So these are some of the some of the interesting organization level features in Zillow's cloud. Just want to run through them very, very quickly. And what we're going to do here is we're actually, you know, from this point forward, we're going to take a look at some of the features for creating new clusters as well. And when we do that, you, know, you see I already have a free tier cluster created here. Uh, I'm actually going to leave that there. Uh, and then what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to create a new cluster. It's going to be a dedicated one, just so that dedicated uh, on GCP, just so that we can see what some of the interesting things that we can do with a new cluster directly in the UI are. On this page, you can see that we actually have multiple cloud providers. Uh, it's very, very easy for us to add new regions. So, uh, you know, we can add a new region in, let's say, two, two, you know, two weeks tops. Uh, and a lot of that is just great. It's just due to our cloud native architecture. So if any of you are familiar, if any of you have seen my previous talks uh, where I go high level on the Movis architecture, or if you've seen some of our documentation, that hopefully should be pretty clear to you as to why it's so easy for us to open up these new cloud regions. Um, and uh, another, another big thing is that uh, uh, you have two currently two different CU types that you can choose from as well. First is called performance optimized. That gives you very, very low latency and high throughput queries. Uh, the indexing is also pretty efficient as well. And the second we like to call capacity optimized. That one really is essentially a, a, a large, it gives you more capacity at the expense of slightly lower throughput and medium latency. Depending on how many vectors you have, you can actually spe specify a, specify the number of CUs that you want. So we can actually come here to this calculator here, and you'll actually see that if we if we have just one million entities or one million vectors that we want to insert, again we're going to be using GCP today. If you have just one million entities that you want to insert, and you have dimensionality of seven hundred sixty eight, you can estimate the cost that that would be. And let's just for you know just just to, to 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 cover all bases we can also look at capacity optimized pricing so you know 4 million we can start 4 million vectors for less than 100 dollars a month uh and then once we go up to about 6 million that's when we need to bump up to 2 cu and that's going to cost us about 200 so so yeah so this is uh this hopefully gives you better better understanding a better idea of what we typically look at when it comes to when it comes to uh, you know all these uh, all these different options here.
in the create cluster menu. Last thing that I'll note that I want to share is the, the, the cloud backup. You can enable this directly from the create a new cluster page, or you can enable this after the fact as well. So we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to turn this off here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create this right now. You'll see that it comes up very, very easily, uh, comes up very easily and very, very quickly. And once that is done, once that is done, I'm actually going to show you some of the interesting things that we can do directly on the UI. So you see the creation uh, is actually very, very fast. Uh, and in this case, it's really, uh, it, it, it should come up to 100%. It should be done in probably about within a minute. Oh, speak of the devil. Um, and uh, one of the interesting things that you can do once you have that vector database up and running, you can create a collection directly in the UI. So this collection name, for example, we can call test. Um, and you can actually just you know, with a very, very, you can, you, can just, you can see the schema directly on screen here. You can, let's say, add new field. So if I have, let's say, a document ID field, and I want it to be a varchar uh, with a max length, let's say 100. So varchars are strings for folks uh, who are a little bit newer to Zillow's cloud. Uh, I can just create that directly in the Zillow's Cloud UI. So it's very, very easy for me to do. Create a collection. Oops, forgot to add the dimensionality of the vectors. I can create a collection just like that. Uh, and I can begin, I can go to the playground and start inserting data as well. What I'm going to do here instead is I'm actually going to drop this collection also from the UI. There's a nice confirmation notice there. And I'm actually going to use sample data instead. So this sample collection, you'll actually see we can add it directly into our newly created vector database. This is a collection of medium articles. So there's actually a description here. There's about 5,000 medium articles published uh, in the year 2020. And what's going on, you know, it, it stores not just the vector that is associated with the title, but also the title itself. Uh, that is a string, the link, uh, the read time, the publication on Medium. So for folks who aren't familiar with Medium, you can have uh, your own publication and you can uh, you, you can really, you know, let's say, uh, be attuned to or subscribe to different publications and read, let's say, material that is uh, that is relevant to you and your interests. You can look at the number of claps for each article as well as the responses as well. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a collection with this sample data. And this data is being imported directly into Zillow's cloud. Uh, it might take it might take a short amount of time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move forward with some of these other features, some of these other things that you can do inside of your newly created vector database while that collection is loading. First is we can take a look at some of the metrics. So we can take a look at you know, CU computation, CU capacity, and storage. CU capacity is at 3% because there is a certain baseline level of, of, of data that really needs to be stored within the cluster uh, for, for, to, to make it operational, basically. We can expand this to, let's say, the last hour or the last six hours. Obviously, this cluster hasn't been up and running for that amount of time yet, so you won't see that much. Uh, you, we, we won't be able to see that much data um, or we won't be able to see that much relevant data if we do that. But if your cluster has been up and running for a while, you can view the metrics pretty easily from this dashboard. From there, we can actually create specific users for this vector database. Uh, and by default, there is a DB admin user. And I can create one. Uh, let's call it test again. Uh, we can specify we can specify whatever role that we want to give to this user. So for example, read write or read only, and then we can select a password as well. Uh, I'm not going to create this particular user just here, but I just wanna show that this is another one of the features that we have. Uh, in addition to at the project level, so if we come here and we have API keys and members, in addition to at the project level, creating um, uh, you know, individual users that can actually use that vector database, we also have the capability of creating individual users uh, oh, excuse me. In addition to creating project level members, people who are capable of creating new vector databases or organizations that are capable of creating new vector databases and managing those databases, 
you can also go in and create individual users for individual vector databases as well. So we make it very, very easy for you to really just do anything that you need to get uh, vector search and to get filtered search up and running within your organization. All right, so now we have that. We can also create backups as well. Um, so for example, I can add a backup, uh, cluster level backup, and it can be, you know, it can, it can be a uh, to to this vector database I've just created. I created one just off a spot like that. So you know, you can see it's July twenty fourth at nine sixteen a.m. Pacific time. Um, but from there as well, you can also see that we can create automatic backups too. So if I enable automatic backup, uh, I can set a particular frequency that I want to back up my vector database, uh, set a retention period. So after that retention period, uh, this particular backup will be deleted. I can set it to, you know, I can, you can set it to up to 30 days. If you need more, uh, if you need a longer retention period, you're always welcome to come to us uh, and ask us for that longer period and a specific backup time as well. So for example, we'll do 7 to 9 p.m. We'll do a 30 day retention period. Let's do let's do custom Monday, Wednesday, and Friday like that. So we can do we can do that just like that. Uh, it's very, very simple. And that has allowed us to just create backups for this particular cluster very, very easily. Last thing here that I want that I want to show before we come back to the collection that we just created inside of the vector database is you can migrate between Milvis, uh, you can migrate between Elasticsearch uh, and Zillow's Cloud. And you can also, this is a newer feature of ours, you can also migrate between clusters. So for example, if I want to migrate to a new cluster or to an existing dedicated cluster, I can do that very, very easily as well. So coming back here, you remember from earlier, we actually took this sort of test collection or test data, and we've loaded this data directly into um, our vector database. Here in this UI, in this screen, we can actually, we can actually look at the total number of loaded entities that are in here uh, at, at the time that we, that we click into this menu. And you can see the schema here and everything. But I think the most interesting part and one of my favorite features of Zillow's cloud is that you can actually just come in here. We have what's called a playground and you can do insert searches, queries. Uh, you can do, you know, you can you search for a particular ID. You can do upsorts and deletes as well. So you can actually just play around and modify your vector database directly from the UI. It's great for testing. It's great for getting started and great for just making sure that everything is working as you expect, making sure that your schema is right and everything and, and, and so on and so forth. We can also look at some of the data that is in here. So again, because this is data from January, I believe to July or August of 2020, uh, you know, there is some there is some articles about COVID in here, uh, some articles about Python um, and, and and other and other bits and pieces uh, as well. And probably my favorite feature, my favorite sub feature of this playground uh, or of you know the 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 of this UI here is the capability just to do direct vector searches from here. So what we've done here, I'm, I'm, that, that was pretty fast. So let me do that again. What I'm doing here is I'm going to take this title vector. This is associated with uh, the article called the report mortality rate of coronavirus is not important. Uh, and what I can do is I can do a vector search directly with this query vector. You can also apply a filter too if you'd like. I'm not going to do that in this case. Uh, and what we can do if we search directly for this inside of Zillow's Cloud is we can actually see some of the some of the individual results or some of the top K results that are actually, and we can actually modify the top K too. Let's modify it to let's say three. So it's a little bit easier to see. So it's just giving us the top three results. And it's looking at, uh, it's again, we vectorize the title, right? The title is, uh, the title vector here is a semantic representation of the content of the title. And if you remember, we actually took the vector that is directly just this, that is directly associated with, uh, with, uh, with this article, and we've searched for it. And you, indeed, you can see that the results are correct. 
right? The score here in this case is very, very low. And that score just means the distance between these two articles uh, because we're using L2 in this case. And it's very low and, you know, it, 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 it simply shows that our collection is working and that our vector search is working as well. We can also take a look at these other sort of these other two uh, articles in our top K as well. And you can see that they are indeed related to COVID. Uh, the second one is called following the spread of coronavirus and the third is called the hidden side effects of the coronavirus as well. So this is just showing you how semantic search is working in action uh, and, and, and really just making sure that just checking all the boxes for you in a very, very easy way and very easy for, uh, in a very easy fashion as well. Coming back here, if I wanna change the query vector, so let's say I can change this to a, you know, to a negative, I can redo that search. I think the search results will pretty much be the same. Yeah, because I've only changed one value. Yep, so they're pretty much the same. But you can see the score is a little bit different. You can see that the score is a little bit different. So instead of that previous score, where it was pretty much exactly zero, now it's a little bit off of zero, which means that the vector is a little bit more, is, is a little bit further away uh, than what it was, uh, further away from our target vectors than what it was before. So that's an overview of really, you know, inserting, you know, taking collections, inserting that data directly into Zillow's cloud and making sure that you know, your schema and everything, making sure that all of it uh, is, 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 is proper. Again, I can, this is with a newly created dedicated instance. So you can just go to Zillow's cloud, you know, create a new account if you haven't already. Spin up a new instance, you'll get $100 in credits every time you sign up and just uh, just go from there, right? So you have, it's very, very easy to do. You you have the capability to just, uh, to, to really just plug and play. The last thing that I wanna show on this particular screen is private link. So private link is, you know, if you ever own private VPC in Google Cloud or in AWS or in Azure, you can create a private link connection from your vector database in your particular region directly to your VPC endpoints. Uh, it is a little bit different for all the different cloud vendors, but we have great instructions here uh, to show you how to set it up on, on AWS GCP as well as Azure. If you do have trouble with any of that, you can always feel free to reach out to us directly, uh, you know, file a support ticket, and we'll get to that very, very quickly. All right. Um, so coming back here, oh, one last thing I forgot to mention, you can also try some of our beta features. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into this. I, this might interest some of the folks that are here on the session today. Uh, some of the beta features include multi-vector and sparse vector search, as well as the ability to support binary float 16 and B float vectors. So what, what this is doing, it, it is uh, currently, if you, if you see it, when I spin up this cluster, it is compatible with Mobus 2.3. I try the beta features, you'll see that it is actually compatible with Mobus 2.4, uh, and then later on, it will be compatible with 2.5, 3.0, so on and so forth. So this is a great way if you want the latest and greatest in Milvis. Uh, if you want to use those features to directly do that inside of Zillow's cloud. And I'm going to, just going to upgrade it to the beta version just like that. This might take a while. Um, it's 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 really just essentially doing an in-place upgrade from Mills 2.3 to 2.4. And uh, once that is done upgrading, you will have access, or in this case, this particular cluster uh, will be able to use some of the new features that are in Mills 2.4. So I will wait for that to, to finish, um, but I'm we're pretty much done with this particular dedicated cluster here. Uh, you can, one last thing I forgot to mention, I just, Zillow's cloud is so feature rich that, uh, sometimes I just can't cover, cover all of it in a, in a single session. Uh, you can actually scale. So if you decide that you need more capacity for your Zillow's cloud instance, for your dedicated server, you can scale it on demand. So I, you know, I've, I've created this cluster with one CU currently see as CU capacity for once that is done upgrading. So once I've upgraded from Mobus 2.3 to Mobus 2.4. I can actually scale to 2CU, to 4CU, you know, to 16CU, to however much CU that I believe that I will need. And I can do that very, very easily as well. That scaling will also happen in place. 
So you will not need to change the public endpoint. Uh, it'll obviously be the same cloud region, and uh, you know, you'll 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 be able to just use your your vector database SNR. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I, I want to show some of the different features for at the project level. So again, we come back uh, we come back here at the organization level. We have these different features, these administrative tabs over here on the left. We dive into individual projects. We can actually see some more of the different things that we can create. We've already talked a little bit about backup and restore and some of the different uh, uh, you know, libraries that we can have in projects as well. We've already taken a look at this one. As you can see, these are actually two backups that I just created on the spot. We can look at the creation days, uh, the creation methods. So the first one is just an auto backup. And the second one is one that I created manually. I'm going to delete both of these. Uh, oh, oops, I actually can't do that from here. Give me one sec. So I can delete. So I can delete a backup like that very, very easily um, for manually created ones if I decide that I no longer need it. For automatic ones, we will do that for you. So depending on the retention day that you set, uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, we'll clear out that backup so that you don't get charged that cost beyond 30 days. You can take a look at pipelines as well. Um, pipelines, I won't talk about this too much, but it's one of the really cool features that we have here on Zill's cloud. One of the things that you can do with pipelines is it essentially gives you the opportunity and the ability to ingest data rather than ingesting vectors. So we, can easily, we can easily view the documentation here. What I'm gonna do instead, I'm just gonna create a pipeline very quickly. The ingestion pipeline I'll choose, uh, again, I'm going to ingest it into, into dedicated 01. I'm going to call this pipeline test and you can look at some of the different things and some of the different things and some of the different ways that we can get data into our vector database using this functionality. So again, Zill's Cloud Pipelines, it gives us the capability to ingest data or we'll have an endpoint to ingest data and that data will then be vectorized using a vectorization method that we, you know, that you, that you specify on this UI here. And then those vectors will be stored directly into the collection that we just specified on that screen. So there's multiple different things that we can do, multiple different ways that we can ingest data into our vector database. The first is taking documents. The second is taking text. Third is taking images. And this one right here is scalar data. So this one is, uh, is metadata, right? What we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a pipeline for ingesting images. And we can see that there is actually two different models that we can choose from. The first is VitBase. Uh, and then the second one is actually also a vision transformer, but this one is trained um, uh, using, uh, using a form of contrastive learning along with text pairs. So that's called, so we're gonna use Clip. We're gonna give it a name and we're just gonna call it tests. Just, whoop. just, we're going to add that. And then once everything looks good here, you see that, uh, uh, this is the, this is the, this is the overview of the function here. We can create that ingestion. Oh, forgot to, I forgot to specify a new collection name as well. So we can call this a test zero. And you can see that it is just created that for us directly. From there, we can create search and deletion pipelines as well. Um, but to do this, we can also take a look at some of the docs here, view the documentation. Through this, you'll be able to see how to how to direct how to use these pipelines and get data directly into your vector database rather than having to worry about uh, you know rather than having to worry about hey how do I do the vectorization on my side? How do I make sure that everything is okay? And how do I have um, how do I have my vector database in the way that I want it? Moving forward, we can take a look at uh, again. These are these are some of the different jobs that we've done. Uh, we can also take a look at collaborators for uh, at the project level as well. So you know, I can invite a new collaborator. Uh, this is if you if you remember, we can actually do that at the organization level. We can actually do that here too. Then we can take a look at our whitelist. Uh, this is not a whitelist that I recommend. 
Um, this is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. I want to use it for testing and, and debugging purposes. Uh, and essentially, that is saying that every vector database or, or any IP out there has access to my vector database. Uh, I can actually show you what that might look like right here. So you can see that IP address is there. Um, the recommendation for production is only to use, uh, only to allow access to your vector database from very, very specific IP addresses that'll improve security and that'll also uh, reduce the chance that there is an incident with your service. Um, we can also, I talked both about the, about the, uh, I talked already about the whitelist. Now uh, there's also a private link here as well. Um, we can also take a look at project level alerts. You'll see that if you remember that we also have alerts at the organization level, those were more administrative, so more related to billing and more related to, um, uh, let's say, alerts that are just uh, more around, uh, you know, the basically managing all of your different projects. Here, we can actually see that these particular alerts are specifically related to performance. And so they are related to capacity, uh, to compute, to QPS, as well as to you know, P99, P99 query and search latency as well. Uh, we can modify these on the spot. So we can enable some, we can uh, delete some, uh, we can, for example, edit this one too. So we can, as long as the threshold is over 10 seconds, then we get an email. Uh, and we just make it very, very easy for you to be able to you know, have, have the right kinds of alerts that you need. And again, same thing as with the organizational level alerts. You can get uh, emails sent to you, sent to organization owners and to the project owners, or you can connect it with PagerDuty or Slack or Lark as well. And I'm not going to go too much over the API console here, but essentially it's a way for you to, uh, uh, it's sort of like a, a little mini postman directly inside of the Zillow's Cloud UI. You can think of it that way. Uh, it's meant directly to it's meant to enable you to to I can select a cluster and I can you know I can list collections um and I can uh, you know actually I want to just run one right here so here I've I've listed the different collections inside of this dedicated the newly created dedicated instance that I've created this is with uh this is with the restful API uh, not with any of the SDKs. You can see that you can see the data that's returned here, and you can indeed verify that it's correct. So I've created a with Zillow's Cloud pipelines in the pipeline UI. I've created a collection called Test Zero, and the Medium Articles collection is from a little bit earlier as well. So that is pretty much it. That is all the all, all the features that I wanted to go over in Zillow's Cloud. Again, yeah, it took me a good half an hour to go through everything. Zillow's Cloud is extremely feature rich. Uh, I did one of these, I wanna say probably about a year ago, also around this time, maybe in August. And uh, there were, Zillow's Cloud was great then, and it is even better now. You can, a lot of the things that you wanna do, a lot of things that you wanna do, you know, testing out your vector database and just making sure that administering it and making sure that everything is up and running, everything is set up properly. You can do that very, very easily, very, very quickly. You can do everything from the UI. Um, and you can see here, right? We can. You also have, if you if you would like, you also have beta features that are available to you as well. Uh, it's just so feature rich and so powerful, uh, and definitely the most performing vector database that's currently out there today. Uh, it's 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 very exciting to see all the work that's been put in and all the work that will continue to go into making Zill's can you know making Zill's cloud uh, the greatest vector database that's out there. So moving forward from here, I have about 10 minutes left before we go over uh, some q and I want to talk, uh, I want to actually just run through this, this notebook. What I'm going to do um, is I'm actually going to drop this dedicated cluster first. You actually see that I have a free cluster up and running already. Um, there's nothing that's in here yet. But you take note of the public endpoint. That public endpoint is, uh, I've already copied and pasted it into here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear clear the outputs of everything here. So give me one sec. One moment here.
So this is a movie recommendation chatbot notebook. What we're going to do is show you how to perform, well, to do RAG over a data set and to give that data set into, we're using OpenAI in this case. So here we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to solve the dependencies that we need. In this case, we're going to use PyMilvis to interact with our Zills Cloud cluster. Uh, we're using, again, the free tier here. So you can, so feel free to follow on directly with uh, this, this code snippet that I'm about to do here. Um, and then from there, we're just going to get some imports and we're going to specify the Zillas UI that we're going to use as well. So here we've, you know, in, in, if you're unaware, I, uh, you can actually specify keys and other private data directly in this section, the secret section here, and you can just grab it, uh, directly uh, in, uh, you know, Google drive or excuse me, Google Colab provides this user data library that you can use to get secrets directly inside of Colab. And from there, we're going to use this data set from Cohere. It is a movie data set. And you can take a look at what that looks like uh, as well. So it's it's got the title, it's got an overview of the movie, genres, producers, and cast. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna extract the overview, we're gonna extract the title, and we're gonna extract the cast. The overview we are going to store, you know, just simply as uh, a varchar, as a string, the title, the uh, the title the same way. Uh, and then the cast we are going to store as metadata. Once we have all of that, the overview we will vectorize. We will store the we will store that along with the metadata into Zillow's cloud, and then we're going to retrieve the most relevant documents related to a query that we have down here. And then we're going to pass those on to OpenAI so that they can so they can you know, generate relevant information for us. So I'm going to run this just right here. I might take a while for everything to download, but what I'm doing here is I'm reading the I'm reading this uh this this data set directly into Parquet, uh, directly as Parquet format into pandas, and then I'm going to use sentence transformers. In particular, I'm going to use this model, so BG small one dot five. Uh, it's you know it's a fully open source model, and we're going to we're going to extract all the data that we need directly from this data set using this function that we've created here right so it allows us it allows to parse out all the actors from uh from each individual row and we're going to do that for the first thousand elements you can do it for more it'll just take a little bit longer uh and you know, just keep in mind a lot of it's going to be dependent on the model that you use as well while that is running we can continue and we can chat about some of the stuff down here too uh, there is a, here, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our Zills Cloud instance. Again, that is a free tier instance I've created. Uh, you can feel free to follow along with me. You can create a free tier instance here as well. And we're, we're going to connect directly to that. If the collection is already there, we're going to drop it first. Let's just make sure we don't run into any errors. We start with a clean slate. We're going to create a schema along with that collection. We're going to add a vector. That vector is the, uh, actually we can, I can show you what's going on here. We're vectorizing the overview. So that vector is gonna be the overview and then we're gonna store the rest of these along with it too. So the title is going to be, we're gonna store the title, we're gonna store the overview and then we're also gonna store uh, the cast as well. The cast is gonna be stored as an array of varchars so that way, what, what we can do a little bit later on is we can actually do some filtering over that too. So I'll show that uh, once it's there. The final step, once we've gotten all of our data into Zillow's cloud is to actually perform a search. Uh, here, what we are searching for is we're pretending that we have uh, a user and that user is coming to our recommendation chatbot and asking, hey, I like action fantasy movies. What are some good ones to watch? We'll specify a top K here. And again, this top K is just the number of elements that is returned by Zillow's cloud. We're going to print all of the all of the hits that we have as well. Uh, before I continue, this cell just finished. So I'm actually just gonna run these very quickly. Um, so we'll see, you know, we can connect to it very easily. We'll drop the collect the collection if it uh, if it already exists. If it doesn't, this command won't really do anything here. We'll define a schema, create an index over it, 
And then what we're going to do is insert entities into that index or into that collection. Again, these are things, these are ones that I've created back up here in this cell. And you can see that that was done very, very quickly. From here, we will run this query and then we're going to run this search as well. We're going to take a look at some of the results that are that are in there. So the most relevant documents, the most relevant documents, I'm, I'm, again, I'm searching over the overviews, vector representation of, of, of the overviews. And the most relevant documents that are related to, I like action fantasy movies, where are some good ones to watch? They are Mortal Kombat, Pacific Rim, and 3000 Rise of Man Pirate. And again, these are the first 1,000 elements in this data set. So keep in mind that, you know, as you add more and more movies in there, you'll see more and more relevant results too. Just based on the overview, based on the model and using Zillow's cloud, I'm able to understand what, well, I'm able to get my my cert, my RAG system to understand what is what the content of the movie is itself, just based on the overview. And I can recommend some good ones based on a query like that as well. Another interesting thing that I want to demonstrate here is the capability to do filtered searches. So let's say I'm a fan of Ian McKellen and I'm a fan of you know, action movies from uh, from him in particular. I can do a filter here. So um, this filter is I'm just using the array contains fil uh, metadata filter that is a part of Zillow's cloud. And if I run that, you can see that it actually gives me Lord of the Rings Return of the King, uh, which you know that is a movie that does indeed have Ian McKellen as part of the cast. And we can see the overview here as well. Now, from there, we can just give the query and we can give the context directly to OpenAI. Uh, in this case, we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, and we can just look at uh, some of the interesting one, or we can, we can just look at what the response was, right? So based on this right here, so based on our latest search, based on the prompt, based on the results of that search, uh, this is the response from our movie chatbot. So you can see it's very, very easy. We've done, you know, just in really a couple of cells and not that many lines of code, within 100 lines of code, we've created at least a prototype of this chatbot. Uh, and you know, we're show, we've, we've showed how it's capable of getting really, really relevant information to our users. I think I only have about two or three minutes left here. So the last thing that I want to show, I'm not going to run through it fully, is a multi-modal rag demo. This one currently, this one is currently set up to use Milvis, but it can easily use Zillow's cloud as well. I'm not going to talk too much about this. I'll just run through it very, very quickly. I think everything is actually has actually been run here already. And what we're doing here is we're taking a video splitting that into frames and audio, embedding all of that together in the same space, and we're retrieving the relevant results. So one of the other things that we can do with Zillow's Cloud, rather than working with just text, is to work with images and to work with audio as well. So I'll just show you the results. I won't show you uh, how the sausage is made here, so to speak, but we have a prompt, what was weird about the coffee mug, and this prompt is related specifically to the video that we have inserted into uh, into our Zillow's Cloud instance. The video I'll actually show you right here is the Google I.O. pre-show. In it, at the very beginning, the musician, he crawls out of this big coffee mug. So we can actually see that here. What I've done is I've taken this whole video and I've taken, I've split up the frames and audio and I've stored it into, I've stored it inside of Zillow's Cloud. So coming back to this demo here, we can actually see that the most relevant content that was retrieved by our vector database, it's related to this prompt, is this image right here. So what was weird about the coffee mug is this image right here. And you can actually see that indeed that there is, you know, there's something going on here, right? So that the that this is indeed very, very related to our prompt. You can see actually the musician is crawling out of this coffee mug. And based on that, we can eventually, I'm not going to show it here, but we can give it, uh, we can send it into uh, a large language model of our choice. For this particular notebook, I chose to use Meta's open source model called Chameleon 7B. Llama 3.1 or 3.2 eventually will have multimodality built into it as well. So that's something to look forward to too.
So yeah, so that's it. Um, I, you know, again, just by way of a quick summary, we showed today how to take a Zillow's Cloud instance. We showed how to, uh, you know, how to how to really modify our, how to create a new vector database, add a collection into it, modify it, you know, have all of these uh, these 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 really enterprise features, these quality of life features around it. We showed how we can easily build a rag chat bot using Zillow's cloud. And also we've seen the potential for vector databases to go beyond text and to go multimodal as well. So I hope this session was helpful for you. Uh, I will take a look at some of the questions from the audience now. We've got some AI assistance here. That's very cool. And from Bill Reynolds, he has a PSA. Carbine is going to release a Zillow's native analytic suite that is smart about generic querying and JSON objects, uh, all the topics that Frank's covered today. Super easy to apply Zillow's features um, and reach out to support at carbine.com to request an early invite. So if those that's something that inter interests folks, folks, definitely be sure to reach out to Bill as well. Uh, so if you have any questions related to some of the topics that I've that I've spoken about today, or some of the things that um, some of the things that are related or adjacent to this field as well, feel free to reach out to to me or reach out to us. Um, we will make these notebooks available to all the attendees uh, after after this session is done here. And until then, um, Steffi, I will hand it back to you. Um. Thanks, Frank. If we don't get any further questions, um, we just want to thank Frank um, for this session. And I'll see you guys sometime soon in the future. <laughs>